Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something a little bit more casual and a bit of a sit down with me to go through Asana and how I use it as an online business owner and a marketing coach and how I think you should use at least some of the program. So I'll go through a few of the basic boards that I think are the must haves for you. As a digital marketing agency owner, I I love the platform for being able to allocate work to my team but even personally within the marketing coaching of the business that I do I love being able to track things like my sales pipeline and my content calendars and I do all of these on Asana to keep them in one place but you might be watching this and thinking Asana is not my preferred platform and most of this advice can be transferred over to whichever platform that you prefer to use so whether that's ClickUp or Todoist or Notion, it's more about what you're keeping track of and some of the basic kind of overviews that I think you should have early on within your business. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to a past version of myself, start sharing my screen and show you through what I keep front of mind on my Asana. The first thing that I use Asana for which most people probably do, is as a to-do list. I am happy to show you this. I might have to blur out some details, but we use this for the entire team. Whether this is you or the entire team, having some kind of system to be able to track tasks and see what is being worked on is so beneficial. The way that we work is just by breaking tasks down into the person that needs to do them and keeping that all on one board. But if you're using things on your own, if you're a solopreneur, then I think the best way that you could do it is um, by actually using it in almost like a doing sort of format. Started, doing, done type of um, element. And that's what I did when I worked on my own. So when I say having some kind of to-do option, having your to-do list, having your in-progress and having a complete. And for me as a business owner, I have a future projects list that I try to keep an eye on. Having places to be able to track what you're working on and track what things you could start to implement. So for those days that the to-do element gets pretty short, you can start to add in your future projects. So things like creating a course or launching a group program could be things that are relevant for you as a coach to adding to future projects, things that you want to work on, but aren't number one priority right now. The daily to do could be things like sales outreach on LinkedIn. It could be repeated tasks like that. It could be posting on social media. And for these, they're kind of going to sit in your to do list pretty much every day. And I actually will put a repeat on it. So I'll put a daily repeat if it's something that I need to do every day that just really helps you get to grips with kind of what I'm working on and feel like I'm organized and I can get everything done all at once. Whereas if I write it down on paper, it's going to be really easy for me one day to forget to write sales outreach down. And then I'm going to maybe miss an activity that's important for my business. The way that I also like to track things is through workflows. So this example here kind of helps you to understand what we're working on. We will develop these workflows for any kind of new projects that we're doing within the business. As a coach, this is a really good example for you for what I mean. Having a kind of idea of how you bring people through working with you and what your elements are to do that. So I've got a five day email challenge, sales calls, Instagram outreach, Facebook or LinkedIn outreach and bi-monthly webinars. Um, that really encourage people to get into my sales funnel um, and they're, they're sales specific activities on my workflow and they don't always happen in a linear way. Then I also track my onboarding. I will say this is hugely important for when you start to scale as a business owner. So when you're finding that you're getting towards being fully booked, having this really written out in a lot of detail and as a side note, my needs a lot more detail and um, but we actually have kind of upgraded to a different system for our workflow now. This is really, really beneficial because it not only will save you time that you can kind of do things on autopilot. And if you've got email templates in here, if you've got welcome emails in here, you can just copy and paste them and, and send it. It also helps for when you bring on staff. So you might be listening to this thinking, but like, yeah, I'm never going to bring on a staff member. I don't ever want to be someone's boss. 
what you might decide to do is bring on somebody like a virtual assistant or outsource other tasks like a marketing, like a sales to other in individuals. So having whatever you, you do, having workflows in place are really, really great at being able to just track how things are going and what needs to be done. So that if you had a VA, for example, and you want them to onboard a new coaching person for you, you can say, okay, when the form submission goes in, do this. When the email response comes in, do this. Um, and it just really helps to be able to generate. If you are somebody who has some structure to your calls, you can also do call breakdowns. So for me, I I do and I don't. I am very flexible with my clients that it's up to what they're working on. But for any of those who come into a call and don't know what to talk about that week, I do have these call outlines as things to bear in mind to work on together. The next thing that I think you really need in your coaching business is something to track your sales. And having a sales pipeline is gonna be hugely beneficial for this. I can't show you mine because obviously it's got some uh, private information in there. Um, I would not want you to see people's names and, and who we're potentially working with. So I'm gonna just create a new one and kind of show you what we would include in it. This is gonna look different for everybody and, and Asana might be too basic for you and you might need a CRM. This might not be a, a fits all type of opportunity. But what I tend to do is actually keep track of A, templates and like how you wanna set this up, useful information, kind of similarly to the, the workflow page. You wanna keep a track of okay, what do I say? Is, is there a bog standard proposal that you can send out that you can keep here so when people ask for it, you can send it? Is there any like FAQs that you can keep a hold of that you can send out? So you can just make the task of answering emails a little bit shorter. And then we will break down. The way that we do it is we actually do cold, warm, closed one, closed loss and we keep track of renewal as well. The other thing that you can do is you can add in stages. So for us, we actually keep a couple of extra stages in between warm and, and kind of signed up. So when someone's warm, to me, that's somebody who's happy to talk with me and to have a conversation and, and that they're interested in potentially working together. There's almost a next step that we keep track of, which is proposal and them actually getting a breakdown from us of what it's like to work together. And this is so handy because every day you can kind of come in, you can assign yourself a task to go in and follow up with this person on that date. And again, you can make this recurring. So maybe it's every week you follow up with them at a specific time so that you know that you're on top of all your sales outreach. And this is probably ironic coming from a marketer to be talking about sales. I think everyone thinks we're like worst enemies between sales and marketing or they think they're the same thing. And I love what is happening in the kind of digital world with the blend between sales and marketing. So I'm a big advocate for sales. I think if you're watching this and you're a coach and you're struggling to get clients, try to implement this, doing some active outreach and prospecting people as being potentially customers of yours is gonna be so beneficial. And when you're first getting started, marketing is a little bit more of a slower process inbound leads people coming to you is a little bit of a slower process so to get up off on your feet to break that that cycle of gain a customer lose a customer and really start to grow your business i think this is a must have and the benefit to things like asana is that you can open them up you can add in the details of the project you can add subtasks like send proposal book follow-up call and all those sorts of things to go within. Here I tend to keep all contact details and info about the person that I'm working with, kind of anything that they've mentioned that's particularly interesting to us in a previous call, any kind of names of people that are important to them or contacts that we've met through them so we can just really get an kind of in the scope view of who they are and who they are to us. So that if it's not just me reading this, or if it's been a long time since I've spoken to the person, it makes sense no matter what. And the benefit to Asana as well is the way that you can look at it. So you saw it automatically pulled it up in like a list view 
I love a board view for things, but you can also look at things like a calendar. So you can just see what are your outstanding tasks for that day, if you prefer. And that takes me on quite nicely to the last thing that I think that you need. And that is a content calendar. So I will show you mine. Although it's a little outdated, I, I actually don't use this. One of the team delivers the content for us now, but this is back from when I did it. And what we tend to do is view this in calendar view and create a post on any particular day. So I'll name it the, the platform. So it'll either be my red account or my personal brand accounts and the theme. And then when I'm in there, I will kind of include all the details here. So I'll upload the image, I'll pop the um, caption in here, I'll assign it to any of the team if I need them to, to work on bits for me, as well as the date that it's going to go live. So to show you an example, here we go. This is a post that's already gone out about um, kind of pushy sales. And I honestly write these on the app on my phone or on my iPad and just fill out the gaps when I can. There's so many features on here that you can add as many images as you wanted to. You can add a link to your Google Drive so that if you've already got the images elsewhere, you can save it. The whole thing's bloody brilliant. So this is the one that I'm going to obviously preach about a lot is getting your content planned out in advance and keeping an eye on it. And Asana might not be the system for you, but if it is something you're using, this is a really good option for you to be able to just go in and keep track of what you're working on. And if I swap to a board view, what we also do is keep track of ideas and references. So like hashtag strategies and things like that, we used to track here. The only other page I have that I actively use is this goals section. And I really do keep track of what I'm working on, how things are moving forward for the business so that I can make sure that we're we're hitting those goals and that everything's going well. But I think once you've got those four, you should be absolutely good to go. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Usually when I'm doing screen shares is very much a tutorial. So I'm curious to know your thoughts and whether this is something that you enjoyed. I have so many different pieces of software in my tech stack that we use on our like day-to-day -day workflow. I even mentioned in this video a couple of times that like, we used to track this in Asana, but now we have a new system for it. So there is much more software that I'd be so happy to show you if you're thinking about what you need as an online business owner, as a coach. It's complicated. There's so much tech out there. It can get really overwhelming. So I'm more than happy to show you guys through what programs work for me. But on that note, I'm going to leave it here and say thank you so much for watching. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more updates. I will be back soon with a range of different videos. I've got a couple of vlogs. I've got a few different pieces of advice around your marketing also. But don't forget, I'm always happy to take suggestions. If you are interested in hearing more, if you want a specific topic covered, just let me know and I'd be more than happy to do that. Thank you everybody. See you soon.